this week to be closer to China. The Greater Bay Area refers to China's grand vision to create a world-class economic and business center by integrating Hong Kong and Macau with nine cities in South China's Guangdong province, including Guangzhou and Shenzhen. If the Greater Bay Area were an independent country, its GDP would rank in the top 15 in the world, roughly the size of Russia's or South Korea's, larger than Australia's. In the early stages of reform and opening up, Guangdong and Hong Kong both flourished. But times have changed and new strategies are needed. Then it will open up the possibility of not only making Hong Kong integrate into the mainland, but I would let Hong Kong integrate more with the rest of the world while taking partners from the program Delta. How does such a massive plan work in practice? How to leverage comparative advantages? What are the challenges? Where are the fault lines? What are the risks? Are the different political, legal, and economic systems a facilitator or an impediment? Some worry that integration could erode the sacrosanct one country, two systems policy. Should they worry? Discover why integrating the Greater Bay Area marks a new stage in China's reform and opening up. This week, B. Closer to China. In the early stages of China's reform and opening up policy, Guangdong Province and Hong Kong both flourished. Guangdong was the center of cheap labor, low-cost manufacturing. Hong Kong was the financial and legal center of Asia, through which much of China's international trade flowed and was financed. But times change, and both models have passed into history. With rising labor costs, which is a good thing for China's workers, Guangdong must upgrade its industry, go tech and high tech. Hong Kong's uniqueness has been eroded by the spectacular rise of Shanghai and Shenzhen as centers of trade and finance. That's why the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area plan is critical. What's the master plan, the big vision of this vast regional coordination? How does such a massive plan work in practice, not only in theory? And where are the fault lines? What are the risks? Are the different political, legal, and economic systems of the Greater Bay Area a facilitator or an inhibitor? In particular, could greater integration erode the sacrosanct one country, two systems policy? Could integration degrade Hong Kong and Macau's distinct way of life? To understand regional coordination is to be closer to China. The Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area is now forming ultra-modern three-dimensional transportational networks among the nine plus two. Nine Guangdong cities, including Guangzhou and Shenzhen, integrated with Hong Kong and Macau. The Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area has become the fourth largest Bay Area in the world, right after Tokyo, New York, and San Francisco. Covering an area of 56,000 square kilometers with approximately 68 million inhabitants, the Greater Bay Area ranks first in the world in geographic size and population. According to a report issued on May 2nd, the Greater Bay Area is taking the shape of a world-class super city cluster and an international free trade port, and it is expected to become a major hub and portal of the Belt and Road Initiative. With favorable policies and extraordinary infrastructure, especially the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge and Guangzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Express Rail Link, the Greater Bay Area is expected to bring new levels of benefits for people and enterprises. Zhou Yunxian, the founder of an entrepreneurial firm, is one of them. 
Every weekday morning, Zhou Yunxian leaves his apartment in Macau and arrives at his office in Hongqin. Firstly, I live in Macau, and Hongqin is just nearby. Go through the checkpoint, then you arrive in Hongqin. It takes me around 10 minutes to get there. Also, most of our team members are from mainland. Office space is needed to introduce talents with demand. And thanks to the government policy, the office space is free for us to use for one year, which reduces lots of burdens. Zhou Yunxian explains that due to geographical limitations and industry restrictions, many young people in Macau have no chance to pursue their dreams. Hongqian, with its ample space separated only by a river, provides that chance. An increasing number of young people in Macau come to Hongqian. Pan Chuan, a Macau official, explains the new close collaborations in the entire Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. Why do you think China decided to put such efforts into establishing the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, and why at this point? Firstly, the current Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area represents a critical juncture of the ancient maritime Silk Road. So, the proposal of building the Greater Bay Area is to accommodate the Belt and Road Initiative. Secondly, our constitutional principle of one country, two systems has been in place for decades. Hong Kong returned to China 21 years ago and Macau 19 years ago. After such a long time, we must adjust our policies in light of the changes in society, economy and environment in that time. Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau demand better integration. We have witnessed significant progress for Hong Kong and Macau respectively since they returned to China. However, some problems remain. Hong Kong is losing its competitiveness due to a lack of growth momentum and innovation. Macau finds it hard to seek a breakthrough to becoming a diversified economy. Against such a backdrop, the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area is designed to build a greater region with sustainable prosperity and stability for Hong Kong and Macau through regional integration. Considering the different political systems and economic structure of the three regions, what's the biggest challenge facing them and how can you handle it? The current bottleneck or factors hindering the Greater Bay Area is a divided market for factors of production. A few obstacles stand in the way of pushing for an integrated market. That is, how to facilitate a smoother flow of capital, population and talent between Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau under the institutional framework of one country, two systems. If we can address that problem well, cooperation between Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau will strengthen and deepen, which will not only serve the growth of the mainland, but will also be crucial for sustainable prosperity and stability for Hong Kong and Macau. Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau should now open wider still. First and foremost, the whole Greater Bay Area is all Chinese territory, so there should be no barriers or obstacles such as those between nation states, which would definitely hinder development. I believe we should come to a suitable consensus. The challenge of developing a unified market and fostering closer ties between Hong Kong, Macau and the mainland while maintaining the constitutional policy of one country, two systems is a problem to be addressed if the Greater Bay Area is to live up to its huge potential. As far as I know, some government departments, including the Ministry of Commerce, are conducting research and rolling out specific policies to help facilitate a more open, greater Bay Area with respect to personnel, cargo and capital flow. Reducing barriers will help foster closer links within the region if we are to achieve integrated growth for the greater Bay Area with common prosperity and build a first-class Bay Area and world-class metropolitan area, this is something we must do. What are the opportunities? How do you deal with the extreme complexity in creating such a massive um, strategic plan? 
Going forward, future growth areas depend on where the competitive industries lie and what role the cities within the Greater Bay Area can play. Take Hong Kong, for example. It will surely emerge stronger as a financial, shipping and aviation hub. Its rich legal and high-end financial expertise will prove to be even more valuable assets. Its advantages in higher institutions will be further highlighted. Within the Greater Bay Area, five of the world's top universities are located in Hong Kong. Shenzhen leads the Greater Bay Area when it comes to technology and innovation. We can expect Shenzhen to continue this momentum. Guangzhou is a city whose functions as a political and cultural hub will be further highlighted in the Greater Bay Area. For other cities, they all have different positions, such as manufacturing or tourism. The key is to find a precise position to play to different cities' strengths. Considering the economic differences in development uh, among the participants in the Greater Bay Area Plan, uh, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Macau, very highly developed, other cities much less so, different industries, etc. How will the Greater Bay Area Plan help the overall economic growth of the region? Development in the Greater Bay Area is uneven. Now the Pearl River Delta is undergoing its industrial transformation and upgrading by shifting some manufacturing processes to its neighboring regions, which will therefore get opportunities to grow. Hong Kong, Macau and prominent cities within the Pearl River Delta continue to develop as well through industry upgrading and shifting. The disparity of wealth within the Greater Bay Area will be narrowed. These southwestern provinces boast rich natural and human resources with relatively lower labor costs, which demonstrates a strong complementarity for the entire Greater Bay Area. Widespread cooperation between the Greater Bay Area and cities within the Pan Pearl River Delta will definitely serve the growth of the Greater Bay Area. So the building of the Greater Bay Area does not refer to the building of simply one Bay Area. It covers multiple areas. Its growth has accumulated and spillover effects. That's why we can tell its functions and significance. In the 2018 work report of the government, Premier Li Keqiang said that the development of Hong Kong and Macau was linked inextricably with the mainland. We will support Hong Kong and Macau in integrating their own development into overall national development and will boost the exchanges and cooperation between the mainland and the two regions. The Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area Metropolitan Region exemplifies China's one country, two systems policy, which describes unique competitive advantages. According to China's grand plan, such advantages can generate wider commercial opportunities and spur high-level economic growth. However, after the return of Hong Kong and Macau, their positions have been declining. As Shanghai becomes a world center of trade and finance, Hong Kong's role is challenged. Similarly, as horse racing and sports lotteries turn Hainan into a center of entertainment and leisure, then Macau's role is also challenged. In addition, because of system differences, barriers remain, such as personnel movement, good circulation, financing, and transportation licenses. On the one hand, the three governments, Guangdong, Hong Kong, and Macau, need to work together to optimize contributions and overcome difficulties. On the other hand, some in Hong Kong and Macau worry that greater integration could affect their system of government and even blur the line, undermining the one country, two systems policy. It's generally recognized that the rise of Shanghai and Shenzhen has attenuated, even eroded, Hong Kong's special position. I assume you agree with that. Can the Greater Bay Area Plan restore Hong Kong's uniqueness or rather change it even further? I think uh, Hong Kong's talent has always been, uh, historically, Hong Kong had two great strengths, historically. One is institutional. That is the legal system which facilitates business, commerce, and finance. Uh, finance is the most complex of all the rest. 
Uh, so we were a great manufacturing center, we were a great commercial center, but what's more important, we can become a great financial center. So, so this is this, uh, uh, one of Hong. The second is talent. You need a lot of talented people. So good system with talented be people is a key. It's like the Gobi Desert. Uh, there's no one living there. So no matter what you do, it's still the desert, right? So you need people and you need good systems. Hong Kong has a good system. It has inherited it. It has treasured it. Uh, but talent uh, has become less available, largely because the population is aging. The elderly population is larger than the working age population. It will remain that way for many decades to come. And one country, two systems, actually prevents the free flow of talent through Hong Kong. Uh, I don't say into Hong Kong because people who come can leave, so through Hong Kong. Shenzhen more particularly has benefited enormously from talent that comes from all over China. Uh, Hong Kong doesn't. So, uh, and that is why China, Shenzhen particularly has moved way ahead of Hong Kong in new industries. Uh, you need people to create them. That as China prospers and as Shanghai prospers and as Shenzhen prospers, of course Shenzhen and Shanghai will dwarf Hong Kong, right? Uh, it will be much dwarf. There's, there, there's, no, there's no real issue in being bigger and wealthier than Hong Kong. The great difference is what Shanghai and Shenzhen cannot do, and what Shanghai and Shenzhen cannot do is that they cannot have a different legal system. Right? And that is because of one country, two systems. It's obvious that the one country, two systems policy is an integral part of the area with Hong Kong and Macau uh, both having that policy and Guangdong, of course, being on the Chinese mainland. Um, so how, how do you deal with the, the complexity of different political systems which uh, express itself in many different ways from uh, of, of licenses, personnel, goods flowing, a whole series of things are derived from the different systems uh, in the one country. So in putting together the plan, how do you, how do you bring all that together and deal with the, these political differences? All these barriers, in fact, cannot be addressed alone by one party among the three parties of Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau. We've been calling for a national coordination mechanism to be established with the authority and power to coordinate between governments of Guangdong, Hong Kong and Macau to further break down mechanism barriers. I know the development plan for the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau Greater Bay Area is under review and is waiting to be approved. We are expecting this plan to offer guidance on the three local governments and in the meantime I also expect to set up a task force led by a senior national leader to coordinate the development of the Greater Bay Area. Only in this way can we make the relevant progress. One single local government can hardly achieve this. There are obvious benefits to Hong Kong and Macau in the Greater Bay Area Plan in terms of economic integration, but some people worry uh, in Hong Kong and Macau that the greater economic integration, particularly with the power of Guangdong, will gradually cause a blurring of the two systems uh, part of the one country, two systems policy. Do you think there's legitimacy in this concern? Uh, we did notice that in Hong Kong there are more different voices. That's why there were disagreements over the notion of customs, immigration and quarantine for outbound and inbound travelers at the same location for the Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Hong Kong high-speed rail network and the Hong Kong, Zhuhai, Macau bridge. I believe integration is an irresistible force. Going forward, only by integrating into the national development landscape can the principle of one country, two systems for Hong Kong and Macau enjoy stronger vitality and bear witness to lasting prosperity and stability for Hong Kong and Macau. From another perspective, some may wonder if their lifestyles will be affected. Back then, when we were at college, most films we watched were produced in Hong Kong, which may have had an impact on our lifestyles. 
People who could sing in Cantonese were considered remarkable. But now, the cultural influence of the mainland has gained the upper hand. It's completely normal. I believe that as long as we exchange and integrate while maintaining our unique cultural characteristics, that will be a good thing. We would never align Hong Kong's culture with that of the mainland. Moving forward, economic growth will enable more exchange opportunities. By drawing strength from each other, we will witness stronger integration. Let's look to the future, not just China 2020, but China 2035, even mid-century China 2050. What do you think will be the role of Hong Kong as a, as a city, as an economic and financial entity, and as a participant in the greater Bay Area, which itself will be part of China's dramatic transformation over these next few decades? By 2035, uh, socially, culturally, uh, we will be much more integrated. Uh, uh, the people in Hong Kong and the people in the Great Bay Area will largely be indistinguishable. For the last 30 years, every 10 marriages that take place in Hong Kong, 40% has been a marriage across the border between a Hong Kong person and someone from the rest of the mainland. This trend is continuing. It won't change. So if, if you go to 2035, that is only you know, a very limited number of years. You know, I would think most people in Hong Kong actually uh, would, have, would have been from the mainland. It, it's, uh, this, this social cultural integration happens regardless of what happens to, to, to uh, to uh, people, government's policy anywhere. Because people can cross the border, they will meet each other, they'll become married, and they'll have children, and they and their children will become Hong Kong residents. Uh, this has been ongoing for a long, long time. It will not change. That is the nature of Hong Kong. And they will have a big economic footprint. They will be hired by companies in both different regions. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and they will be uh, working to create new companies. It will be, be uh, indistinguishable, I think. In 2017, the total economic output of the Greater Bay Area reached approximately 1.5 trillion U.S. dollars, which exceeded the San Francisco Bay Area and is close to the New York Bay Area. The import and export trade volume is three times that of the Tokyo Bay Area. The container throughput is even more impressive, reaching 4.5 times the sum of the other three Bay Areas combined. In addition, the region is home to 16 of the Fortune Global 500 companies and over 30,000 state-level high-tech companies. However, Compared to the other three well-known Bay Areas, a large gap still exists in terms of service, innovation, and international influence. In developing the Greater Bay Plan, you have uh, studied the Bay Plans of other famous regions, Tokyo, New York, San Francisco. What have you learned from those experiences, and then how can you apply it to the special conditions in the Pearl River Delta? The Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area is aiming to emulate world class Bay Areas. To build a first class Bay Area in a world class metropolitan area, we need to learn from these globally renowned Bay Areas. Take the San Francisco Bay Area, for example. The most advanced high tech enterprises chose to base themselves there due to its attractive environment for technology development and innovation. Many globally renowned universities are also located in this Bay Area, such as Stanford University in Silicon Valley and the University of California at Berkeley. These universities have cultivated numerous talents. What's more, the San Francisco Bay Area also contains research institutes, world-class key laboratories, project centers, and research and development centers.
It's only natural that the top talents would love to be there. We should learn from that. To build a first-class Bay Area, we must pay close attention to the cultivation of an innovation-friendly environment in order to significantly enhance capabilities in technology and innovation. Then can we attract innovative resources, pool human resources, and turn into a fertile land for innovative ideas to take root and grow. As part of China's continuing economic development, industrial transformation is critical now. Transitioning from low-cost, labor-intensive, energy-intensive manufacturing industries to higher value-added technology, service, branding, etc. How will the Greater Bay Plan fit into this overall industrial transformation that China must undergo? The Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area must also rely on innovation to upgrade its industrial structures. We already have a clear goal of turning it into a world-class metropolitan area. One priority is to build a technology and innovation center. The Greater Bay Area is equipped with solid foundations with relatively strong research capabilities of some higher institutions and research institutes in Hong Kong and Macau. In particular, Shenzhen in the Pearl River Delta is an innovation-driven city, leading the new technological revolution in industrial transformation. Shenzhen plays an exemplary role in innovation nationwide, with a high number of annual patents for invention and ranks highly at the global level. Meanwhile, it has also cultivated a number of leading technology enterprises, such as Tencent Huawei and UAV maker DJI Innovations. Quite a few internet giants have emerged there and flourished. That's why we need to build the Greater Bay Area into a technology and innovation center. It will also have great significance for China as a whole. We're now promoting innovation-driven strategies, which rely on metropolitan areas such as the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area to take the lead because these areas are well equipped with rich, innovative resources. Promotion of innovation in the Greater Bay Area and industrial upgrading will lead China's national industry restructuring and development into a new era. If the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area were an independent country, its GDP would rank almost in the top 10, certainly in the top 15, roughly the size of Russia's or South Korea's, larger than Australia's. The master plan makes sense because Guangdong and Hong Kong have each lost its unique role, low-cost producer and center of trade and finance, respectively. New strategic positioning must be developed. The targets are clear, industrial transformation, moving up the value chain with technology, branding, and service. Here, Hong Kong's world-class competence and professionalism, combined with Guangdong's capacity to mobilize resources, can make a powerful combination. To achieve global competitiveness, two keys are building world-class infrastructure for connectivity and attracting world-class talent to drive innovation. The former is easier than the latter. New industries must be supported, next generation IT, biotech, high-end equipment manufacturing, new materials, creative culture. There is more competition, especially from the Yangtze River economic belt centered around Shanghai. Moreover, in the past, Hong Kong took all of the Chinese mainland as its market. Now it will have to think and focus more regionally. A potential challenge must be addressed. How might such central planning affect Hong Kong, which thrived because its market system has been one of the freest in the world and its legal system one of the finest in the world? In China's new era, with economic development more complex, President Xi Jinping framed the five new concepts of development, of which coordination is the second. The Greater Bay Area exemplifies coordination. It is the test case to watch to be closer to China.